What's up everybody, welcome back. Today I'm talking about my investing plan for 2021 and I'm really excited to share it with everybody because I think it's super accessible to anybody watching and capable of saving just a little bit of money. Now I really feel that money buys free time and the only way to actually get to that free time and buy that free time is to have your money work for you. So to get this one started I do want to share a couple disclaimers and a little bit of background information. To kick this off because we're talking about money today, I'm not actually a financial advisor. The cool part about this is I'm just sharing my opinions, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me, and realistically where I am today. So I started at zero out of college with uh, some debt, some loans, and now the only debt I have to my name is essentially the loans I have on some of the properties. I've built up a decent portfolio of rental properties, stocks, and of course my retirement accounts and my liquid cash. Why I'm doing all of that is because I believe, and I mentioned it earlier in the video, that money buys free time. I want to get to that financial independence. And realistically, I'm probably a conservative version of the FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early. And I say conservative because while I do save money and I do invest and I want to get to that passive income piece and create more cash flow for myself that's not my nine to five, I do also like to spend money on fun things like flying. And to be honest, some of the people in the fire movement would probably look at that and just be completely disappointed. The people that would count the actual pieces of toilet paper they take off of their own roll in their house because it costs too much money. That's a little extreme. I'm not on that side. I actually enjoy spending some of my money because, well, we don't necessarily know how long we're going to be on this earth. So while you still have to invest, you got to enjoy your life. Anyways, the couple of big disclaimers I want to share is that I did graduate out of college with a good job. So I did have a decent amount of W-2 income and commission. I was in sales, medical sales, that allowed me to start investing in real estate and stock. And the thing is, is that actually makes a very big difference if you have a basic level of expenses you're trying to survive and then also have discretionary that you can save. So it does help out a lot. I'm also in a very good job now. I'm the VP of sales of a startup here in Orlando, Florida. So it allows me to take some of that income and also continue to invest. With that said, I have had a job before where I didn't make too much commission and probably about a $50,000 base salary. And that was a, a decent stint when I first moved back into Orlando. So it did allow me to kind of experience what it was like to invest with that. And it was a lot more challenging. If you are careful with it though, it is possible to do that kind of stuff. It's just a slower creep up to building up that, that portfolio if you wanna really save the money. I also really didn't start investing in real estate until about 2015. and didn't really touch the stock market outside of the 401ks or my IRAs until about 2013, 2014. And I graduated in 2011. Half of that was because I was paying down debt and getting rid of student loans that I had. And the other half was I just didn't know what to do with some of the cash. I was just kind of putting it in, a, in my bank account and guessing, trying to figure out what to do with it, which is a good problem to have. But really just kind of knocks on the, the lack of financial literacy we have in this country when you graduate out of college. You spend all this time at school and yet you graduate and don't really know what to do when you actually make a paycheck. Good job. So that's all the disclaimers that I'm gonna share. We're gonna go ahead and get started now. And the first part of my investing plan for 2021 is gonna start with something that I think everybody else can do, and that's gonna include all your retirement accounts, right? So your 401k right off the bat, the plan is to actually max that out for the year. And for me, at my point, my career, that is much more of a tax benefit for me. In 2021, for a single guy, it's gonna be, single guy or girl, $19,500 for the year. So directly pre-tax into your retirement account. The other retirement accounts that you can kind of think about and things that I'm still trying to figure out, I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet, is the traditional IRA and then the Roth IRA. The difference is that there is an income limit for your Roth IRA that if you are over that, which I will be next year, I can't actually contribute to that. So I'll have to do something into my traditional IRA and then do a conversion at the end of the year, which essentially just means that I have to pay taxes on those prior to pushing them into my Roth IRA. Benefits of that, we can talk about in another video, but just to give you an idea, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna actually put that $6,000 into the traditional IRA this year, or technically 2021, for 
investment purposes. I might want to actually use it in my brokerage account, which we'll talk about in a second. With all of that said, I will also be making sure that my liquid cash accounts, so the emergency funds and the cushions I have for real estate and things like that are all tidied up. Now, this isn't necessarily my investment plan because I do have that nest egg already, but for anybody watching that hasn't done that, I would always say, and that's how I got started, is to build up an emergency fund and then have any kind of cushion for any other issues like getting into real estate and having that cushion. I always do three to six months expenses. So in that case, you do need to actually budget and figure out how to do that. You can take an Excel sheet and just track everything. Mint does a really good job of doing that as well, but tracking what you're actually spending, and I'm talking about free time, your hobbies, the food that you buy, I mean, literally any of the expenses, just so you understand what you're actually spending money on take those expenses, average it out, and then find out what your actual expenses are for a certain amount of time. Because it's gonna be really tough to save a cushion if you have no idea what you're actually spending money on. Mine sits probably around $3,500 to $3,900. Again, a little bit of a lifestyle creep, and that's everything that I have right now in terms of flying and all my free time that is actually expensive. So really, you could probably even cut down on some of those expenses that you look at. So. That's why I would really start, not necessarily part of my plan for this coming year, just because I do have that nest egg already. So number two here is actually gonna be my brokerage account. And funny story there, which I will share in a different video just talking on the, about the portfolio, that I actually put some money in originally, lost a little bit of money, and then pulled it all out to get into real estate. So there's a good gap there that I missed out on dividends and just overall market increases. So I know, painful, I screwed up, but that's, part of the learning process and I want to get back into the market and really expand my portfolio. The plan here is to dive back into some of the dividend growth stocks that I did have originally and then also spend a little more time actually researching and understanding the metrics that I would look for in a, in a solid portfolio just like I do for some of the real estate metrics. So definitely much more of a learning process there. Uh, now I have thrown about $35,000 into the brokerage account to get started again and about 50% of that is Vanguard mutual funds and Vanguard ETFs and the other 43%, 46% is some of those individual dividend stocks that I'm familiar with and maybe one or two stocks that are probably way too risky but put a little bit of money in there. The rest of the percentage of the portfolio is actually going to be just liquid cash, make sure it's on hand and I can do any kind of quick buys. Spend time touching on all of that in another video, but the, the plan really for 2021 is probably to put about $1,200 a month into that account. Not necessarily purchasing that, but I will try to make sure that I, I keep that regular balance of about 50% mutual funds and ETFs versus the individual stocks just because of one timing and actually spending the time to research these companies and then two just making sure that I'm somewhat diversified right now that $1,200 can change as the year goes on because being in sales and being with a growing company you can probably make more money and with that being the case, I might end up throwing more money into that account, but it really is gonna depend on what's going on for the rest of the year. Right now, I'm comfortable looking at where I've been spending money and where I've been investing and feel comfortable with that $1,200 mark in terms of growing the portfolio. Next up is gonna be the real estate investments for myself. Right now, I am at five doors and that is two properties. I had three properties, ended up dumping one, which is single family, to get into a duplex. This happened right around last year with the COVID stuff happening. And so with that going down, it just didn't make sense to try to find another property at the time. I think everyone was trying to be careful with what they were doing. And that was the same thing for me. And have probably put about three or four deals in in the last quarter of 2020, ended up losing out because of uh, cash offers on the properties and the numbers just didn't line up. So I already have a couple of metrics that I look for in terms of like cap rate, cash flow, and my entire goal is a buy and hold on a property that is going to cash flow, pay the mortgage, and so then you have two things. You have both the, the appreciation of the property and then the cash flow from the rent. So that's, that's my big focus. For 2021, I'd like to actually get another two to three doors, which in this case could be one more property, a duplex or a triplex. While I didn't start out this way, I do now do the house hack where I'll put a low amount down, get into the property, fix it up a little bit, and then also refinance it so I get away from if it's a 
FHA or if it's a conventional loan with some mortgage ins insurance on it, I can refinance out of that. Uh, before, when I started, I actually was capable of putting 25% down, and the kicker there is that I couldn't live in it because I was doing it from across the state. Also, which I will touch on in a different video that's just talking on the real estate. Right now, gross profit at the end of the year for the properties are sitting, and this is including the one that I'm living in right now, is about $10,000. And if I was able to rent this one out, I'd probably be sitting at about $26,000. The goal for next year would, again, adding those two to three doors, would hopefully be able to get that probably closer to $40,000 in gross profit and closer to that uh, $300 to $400 a door, which I normally look for. So the last part of my investing plan for 2021 really is just investing in myself. And I know before you say, oh my God, or roll your eyes, it is really super important. You can build up these income streams, you can work on retiring early, but at the end of the day, if you don't have anything to enjoy or people to spend that now bought time with, what was the bat battle for at the end of the day, right? So I'll spend a lot of 2021, I think, expanding on some of my hobbies, such as flying and making sure that my mind, body, and soul are all set and in a good spot for 2021, which I think is super important, especially the mental health aspect, which everybody has probably seen in 2020. I'll also be spending a lot of time and energy on the startup that I'm currently at because startups just take a lot of effort and we're putting a lot of time into building out this sales team and sales force. And lastly, just building out the, the personal brand that I think I was talking about in 2019, 2018 as well. Just making sure things on LinkedIn, Instagram, everything is reflecting how I feel and what I believe and that it's, that it's out there for everybody to also learn from. So that's the high level overview of the investing plan for 2021. The very first in my plan is going to be the retirement accounts, a lot of it for the actual retirement or the, the tax benefits essentially. Number two is going to be the brokerage account. I will be kind of starting that back up and I will be doing a separate video on that. The other piece is going to be my real estate portfolio, so another income stream and continue diving into that depending on where this market is next year as well. And the last piece is, of course, one of the most important pieces and that's the mind, body, soul, myself my personal time, investing in me, because at the end of the day, the more you invest in yourself, the better everything else is around you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and press the like button. That actually helps share the video with everybody else. If you have questions or you'd like to see something shared in those specific videos about real estate or the brokerage account, leave a comment below. See you later.